Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. I um, hope you're all well and all ready to continue with part three of the landscape um, picture. This is how we far, um, or how far I got last time. I know that you're all um, crafting along and you might be at a different stage or it might look differently because you've chosen a different type of landscape, but that's what it's all about. It's giving you help and tips of how to design your own landscape. So hopefully um, we we conclude this today with adding lots and lots more detail into the, into the landscape. Um, I'm thinking about plants and trees and um, maybe some more sheep. Um, and that kind of thing. So I'll take you um, through this step by step. Of course, as you know, you can catch up still with uh, the previous two episodes of the landscape, um, design your own landscape, needle felted, um, try to get all the words and design your own needle felted landscape um, tutorial. And uh, they stay on YouTube. So you get part one and two stay there. And then part three will become that as well. But today, if you're watching today on the 20th of April 2021, you're watching this live. And this will be repeated on Thursday, which is the 22nd of April at 7 p.m. p.m. on Facebook, which is um, at themakers.co.uk so you can join us live again because if you're watching live you're um, in for a chance to win a prize and let's just do this first of all so today's prize is win yourself a baby barn owl kit that makes four and uh, as you know in our kit you get everything to the materials as well as the tools to make um, those four adoring barn owls and what we would like to know from you which pop into the comments whether you're watching this today on YouTube or on Thursday the 22nd of April on Facebook tell us what animal is hiding in your landscape and um, yeah let's see what what animals are hiding in your landscape that would be lovely to hear from you so uh, the the uh, competition um, to win a prize is only um, valid today if you're watching this live on the 20th of April 2021 or on Thursday the 22nd um, of April 2021. If you're watching this at any other time then you just have to make sure you come uh, to our live streams next time which we are doing every Tuesday at 1 p.m. here on YouTube. So if you give us the thumbs up definitely today if you're watching um, live give us the thumbs up give us the thumbs up anyway and uh, subscribe to our channel and then you'll never miss out on any any of these um, free tutorials. Let's just have a look who is here today. Uh, we've got um, lots of people. We've got um, MM, no idea who that is, but hello, it's actually MMA. Um, Ashley is there, hello, she's all set and ready. Um, could be a he, I suppose, it's, it's both, isn't it? Um, female and male name. Um, Diane um, is here, Sandra um, says, hello, fluffy friends. Um, thank you, Sandra. Yes, I've, I haven't forgotten to mention thumbs up, but everybody else uh, needs to remember to give us the thumbs up as well. Um, ooh, Ashley says, depending on how this goes, I fancy an underwater seascape. That's that's good. A vampire venom is there. Hello. Um, and we have got awkward prawn. Oh, I like that name. <laughs> um, Eva is there from Norway. Um, Karen is there. Uh, Karen says she's got only about 20 minutes and then she's got to go back to work. I think lots of people are back at work. Our numbers have dropped right down uh, for the lunchtime um, uh, live streaming, but good job you can uh, watch it any other time. Jane is there. Hello, Jane. Jude. Michael is there. Hello, Michael. Um, Carol. And of course, Alicia is uh, my backup today, so she will be um, hopefully feeding back some things um, like, for example, important information like the winner, who's going to be the winner today, which are co uh, the winner is picked completely at random. So we uh, we don't give anybody preference. Serena is Serena is here. Hi, Serena. I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, and we have got who else? Oh, Ju it's Jude's birthday. So happy birthday, Jude. And um, Meg is here. Um, another Carol is here, Merlington's is here, uh, Margaret is here, Joe, Donna is here, hello Donna, um, and Catherine, and uh, then it just repeats again, oh we're starting to get um, ants hiding in my landscape, carrying leaves, 
that's a really good they are so easy to needle felt it i can add ants into this landscape um catherine says i have an owl hiding in my tree i have an owl hiding in my tree too that's definitely the plan for today um a red panda is hiding in mine oh like that i think a red panda is actually um on the plan for one of our subscription boxes so watch out for that one um uh, a hare will be peeping, going in mine, peeping out of its burrow. Um, so, okay, right. I'm going to have to start needle felting on this landscape and not just read all the um, lovely comments because that's what we're here for. So um, let's go to the overhead camera and have a look what's happening here. So we've, uh, if you remember it, I sort of kept the blue of the uh, felt sheet shining through. If, you, if you're only joining us today and you've missed all of this, we, we've used a, a wool viscous uh, felt sheet. Love this particular because it's nice and thin, very, very sturdy. It doesn't pull out of shape and best of all, it doesn't squeak. And those of you who don't like squeaky felt know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of, the, of those who have no idea what I'm talking about is because you Obviously, either never felt squeaky felt or you don't mind. Um, either is, um, of course, fine too. I'm just getting all my colours at the ready. I've got my whole palettes here. They have got a little bit muddled up. So I started out with greens and blues and browns and um, and bright colours here. And then it all went a bit pear shape as I was getting carried away just putting the colors on here so we've got a uh, we've made this little house if you remember we um a little template which is was just a google image and um i traced around the out outline onto water soluble paper which um, is this kind of stuff it's see-through so you can um you you can uh, see a template or an outline of something shining through as you can see my hand and then you can cut it out and then put it straight onto your picture so you don't have to worry about any sort of dimensional um, issues that you might have and um, the way that I see it here at the moment this hill here right at the front is is sort of literally the, f the closest to me as I'm the observer looking down into the field here and then further afield and then here on the uh, on the in the background right far away are the hills and that's so whatever you're putting on this hill now will will zone it in tune no what's the word zoom it in more or less and I I sort of just for fun um later not later earlier exactly the opposite not later earlier um made I just sort of um, modeled a tree in my hand and just put it here um and you will see as soon as you put something like that onto this part here. I, I show you how to make the tree. This is just to give you an idea of how the perspective has suddenly changed because you've got a tree here in front and that, and everything else um, becomes further um, away. So it really highlights the, the depth of this picture. So this is one of the golden rules about landscape needle felting is make sure that what, what um, is close to you is big and what's further away is small and that adds that's perspective into the whole um, picture. I really like it when there are lighter patches and um, sort of areas that, that that don't look completely exactly the same because, I mean, even this, this little line here to me looks like it could be a path um, around coming down, you know, be hiding behind that hill. This area here looks almost like the sun's shining onto it from this side. So we haven't really talked about shadows and sun yet, but I um, I don't want to overcomplicate this. This is an introduction to, um, to landscape needle felting. So what I'm going to show you is how um, you can make a tree. So for this, what I love using are these little are these little blue face Lester curls. We do have them, we sell them um, like this. They can come in different, slightly different colorways. This one is sort of a gray and blonder version. I think what works really well is um, some brown for the tree trunk as well. So um, I'm I'm all using I'm using wool butts for all of this here, as as you know. So I'm going to use a little bit of this milk sheep here. Um, any brown will do and maybe just another little um a, a, a different kind of color so i'm using here the um country sheep but they're they're sort of a, a a gray brown and i think they sort of um harmonize quite well with the curls as well and then uh, depending whether you give your trees foliage you you need some greens um i i don't expect that you needle felt every single leaf because this is the beauty about the uh, landscape 
uh, needle felting is that things sort of start making sense even if you just put them on in, in large quantities. So you could use, um, this is the pea green, mix it with a little bit of lichen green and um, you can use some of the green version of the Leicester curls. They're obviously dyed, um, the brown and grey ones, they are natural. Um, so you can use, these are sort of the colours that you can put into your tree, different colours, green if you've got them. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it. What is nice is that it's a, it, would, it would be a different colour, green, here to the background. So um, if you put that there, maybe you ne we need to put some other colours into that tree to keep it um, a little bit more distinct from what's going on behind it. Um, the way that we can continue keeping that 3D appearance is by um, by keeping this, the, the, the tree 3D. And so I'm going to start this now. I'm going to start with um, the stem, the trunk, because that's what the tree needs to grow. And all I'm going to do is I'm using my coarse felting needle. I'm going to stab into um, the picture here and sort of following how I imagine the tree sort of has its has its um its roots firmly sort of in the ground. So we're starting exactly how the tree would have started, coming from the ground with the roots out and then it grows into um, a, a healthy trunk there. And what I normally do is I, I put um very sort of basic branches into the picture into on top of the tree so then you uh, because I'm adding a foliage on top you won't be able to see these but I do think it's nice when they peep through occasionally so a tree often has got um, foliage on there but it also has got the branches um, that are that you never sort of quite get completely hidden they are there so we're just adding them into the tree and remember when you flat needle felting do take your um, piece off the mat. I am using the earth mat today with uh, the harder um, base on top and the soft on the bottom. Um, this is something that um, I repeat myself, I know, but it's something that uh, a, a very um, lovely needle felting artist who does mainly 2D um, pictures has told us that she loves our earth mat, but she prefers using, for 2D needle felting, she prefers using the, um, the firm base mat on top. I can see why it is, it, it kind of, I mean, I, I also like the other side, uh, um, but I can see why she's saying it because it, you get more resistance. And so you feel like you're actually fastening it into the uh, felt a little bit um, more thoroughly. I think that's it. So it, it, it does, um, it, it tires your arm a bit quicker. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So there's my um, tree evolving and um, and I'm going to give um, put shadow not shadows but some you know tree trunks they often have like um, things growing out of them or they've got um, uneven bits in them so I'm just going to put randomly some of that grayer wool into it and that um, highlights perhaps that the bark isn't completely smooth but more um, I don't know more uneven on in some areas than others and um, and then you can use these curls to give the tree some with curls by the way we always recommend cut cut your curls don't tear them because you just uh, pull them pull them so far much that you you pull the frizz out of them um, so you just get very instead instead of having these really uh, distinct curls you just end up with frizzy frizzy ends um, so you can add the curls into um, the base of the tree, almost sort of extending the, ro the roots, but making them more gnarly, and it, it works quite well that way. Um, remember to look at your picture whilst you're doing it. Take photos of, of, your, fo of your picture. Look at it through the uh, lens of the camera. It just makes such a difference um, in, in observing what you're actually doing, whether you're doing it inten intentionally or not. And um, I'm going to add a little bit more brown onto that tree trunk here in a minute, but I just want to get these roots down first. So with the great thing with needle felting is that you can always adjust the, the, um, the picture itself or you can 
um, add things to it. If you don't like it, you can take it off. So there's nothing ever is set in stone, just, just set in wool. Um, and what I'm going to do is to soften that uh, base here again. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of brown over the top to cover up the stark contrast here. And that um, makes a huge difference. So just covering some of these lighter colors that I've added into there. And now it looks more natural as if the, the roots sort of are coming coming more naturally from, from that um, part of the tree. And um, and then to add the um, the foliage, you can just plain mix all the wools that you've got there. That that's one way of doing it. I'm going to leave the curls out for now. I'm just going to mix these three colours, but I'm not mixing them very very thoroughly. I am mixing them um, sort of very mottled, a very mottled mix, and keeping it really soft. What I will, however, do is I will make sure that this side of the tree is slightly lighter because I'm sort of imagining the sun shining in on onto that direction, and then I um I want to make also make sure that I see some of the brown tree trunks. So I'm starting to lay out the wool so that bits of the of the not the tree trunk the branches will be visible, and you can manipulate that whilst you're felting it on as well. So I'm going round the outer edge of, of all these leaves that I've added onto there. And I'm um, keeping it 3D by stabbing into the outside. So it's really important that wherever you position something that goes into the foreground, that you haven't suddenly covered something up that you were felt really quite precious about in the background. So if you've made a feature in the background and suddenly your tree is um, hiding all of that because um, you've basically... <laughs> covered it all up then um, you need to sort of plan that a little bit better you can always make the tree smaller it doesn't have to be as big as that um, it's just if once you decide on the size of it it really does determine everything else that goes on around it and behind it so I've got my tree on there now and I'm definitely going to let a little owl sit on maybe this branch or this branch and uh, pop its head out of um, out of the the tree so keep that background away from the tree um, by you can step sort of into the outer side of um, your picture and if for whatever reason you um, you you you're upset that something's been lost here in the background you can always add um, more colors into the background so as long as you don't cover the tree up that would be kind of wrong, but you could sort of add more dark wool into the background to bring that tree forward. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Again, I'm keeping that tree separate, so I'm making sure that the tree has got its own um, dominant place here in the foreground because it is an important feature of the picture because we've put it right in front. It's the, the closest part that we've added here right now. So. Um, so whatever I put in, in behind it is, is further away. And um, that's just sort of giving you an idea of how to put the tree in. You can also cover some of the roots up. Oh, I never used those green curls. You can add these green curls into, into the tree as extra um, bits, bits of detail. Um, they just sort of add um, texture and... Um, um, yeah, make the tree come to life a little bit more. So there's my uh, there's my tree. My roots here, I can cover them up a little bit more, place them more into the picture if necessary. You could even use the green curls. The, the green curls, they look great like moss or sort of um, um, like quite a thorny um, branch, um, something like that. So you can put that put that here in the foreground and that will help to integrate the roots a little bit so that they don't not just sitting um, um, on top of everything but um, they're obviously are growing into um, in, into the ground here while well, they're coming out of the ground even so that is how the picture looks at the moment just looking at the whole thing um, and I'm just gonna have a quick check in with everybody how everybody's doing um so let's oh i've disappeared hang on um so let's have a look what um animals are hiding i'm going i'm going to uh, read backwards um, i mean not literally backwards just the comments from the from the bottom up 
Um, oh, Margaret says, tree trunk looks fat. Thank you very much. Oh, Karen has to shoot off now. Um, uh, Alicia is asking anybody watching for the first time today. I'm And Merlington says, I'm doing the poppy one, Alicia, that I wanted the festival weekend. Really enjoying it. A poppy um, is amazing. That is a good clue to talk about the poppies. So the poppy picture that is being referred to is this one here that's one of our kits it's brand new and uh, it has got very sort of uh, similar features that you will recognize in that there are sheep and then there's a building here at the back and that is um, made with the help of water soluble paper so of course you get the instructions and the template and everything else to go with it so you can design your um, you can make the your very own poppy picture we have two more landscape pictures in our repertoire one is the cool landscape and one is the spring landscape which is probably Probably quite appropriate right now with daffodils and and sheep and um, primroses here at the front and um, a happy blue sky which is pretty much what uh, the weather is like today where I am I don't know what, what it's like where you are but spring is definitely just round the corner so that's um that's good to know um, I'm also really, really excited to talk about some of the um, projects we're doing in May. We've got it all planned out now and I, I, I really have to show you this now. I, I don't want to wait very much um, longer. Um, so we have the next, um, the uh, May live streams. Let's talk about May live streams. Next week is a, is, a, is a different one altogether. I'll talk about that too. But May live streams. Let's have a look what's happening in May. So we've got coming up in May. Um, first of all, there is the bug in the mug, which, um, of course, well, it's, it's showing you how to needle felt the ladybug, but of course the mug comes with the, uh, the pack. So you can buy this one and make a long, um, in one session with me, we make the bug from scratch and, um, um, and he's quite an easy project to make. And then after that, we have got, the, and that is May the 4th. And then after that, we have got coming up, what's next? The, oh yes, the wet felted flowers. That's a new one to me. And I've been practicing lots and lots. I've had help from um, a friend, Jana, um, from Flock to Felts, who's um, shown me how to wet felt because she's a master at it. And I'm getting the hang of it slowly. I I, I am. And there is a, a pack that you can buy, a wool mix, I should say, that um, has got so much wool in there. And it's also perfect for making fairies, design your own fairies. And that is the um, starter wool mix for flowers and uh, wet felted flowers and fairies. May the 18th, the week after, is little needle felted fishies, which are um, oh, it's such a fun project. Again, there is a wool mix available that you can buy now, which is the exotic wool mix. It has got eight little colors, uh, eight colors in there, and uh, you can make over 20 fish. In fact, 24 fish you can make from this wool mix, and you use the, all the colors in the wool mix to decorate your little fish as well. Just to give you a heads up, it's using the water-soluble paper. May the 25th, we've got a needle felted trug um, tutorial. I um, I know it's a bit random, but we're thinking of the three little pigs that are coming in in May as the subscription box, and then of course in June we've got the Dartmoor ponies uh, coming. So a truck to feed all your animals, and we will also show you how to needle felt the vegetables that go in there. For this, the all the um, ingredients they're always featured on the li live stream advance. Um, um, thumbnail and and um, the advanced um, I don't know what to call it, advanced live stream something or the other on YouTube so you can see it all already on um, on YouTube um, the things that are happening then and just to show you the live thing so the truck is this just to put it into context of how big it is. So it is, um, it's got a carrot in, in there. In fact, it's got two carrots in there. It has got, um, I don't know, you know, you get these fancy carrots, don't you? Different colored carrots. It's got those. It's got some, um, some uh, parsnips and turnips in there. And um, um, you can put in it whatever you like. It also works really well as a flower pot. So if you don't, if you're not keen on putting vegetables in there for whatever reason, you could um, use it as a flower pot. And it ha it is um, using pipe cleaner to make the basic shape. And um, and then this is the um, I think it's the 
Now, which one is that? It's either the honey caracal or the caracal merino, but it's all up already on YouTube for you to see what you will need. And then, of course, for the little vegetables, talking about the green Leicester curls, you just need some green Leicester curls and some vegetable um, colored wool bats and you're in business. So that's the truck which will serve the three little piggies and the Dartmoor pony if you're making it for something to go with our specific um, products. Um, talking about the subscription boxes, you've got um, 10 days um, to, in fact, 11 days. No, is it 10 days? Um, um, January, February, March, April. It's only 30 days in, in, Mar in April. So you've got 10 days to get your subscription box, which makes the puffin. I've, we've seen some amazing puffins, absolutely beautiful, uh, with perfect feet and a perfect beak and everything else perfect too. And I know the feet are a challenge, but we do want you to learn new things um, with our subscription boxes. So you might be cursing us, but at the end of it, you all did the feet and you did a brilliant job. So well done, everybody. And um, of course, the, for fairies, we've got the daisy. Fairy is still available for the rest of the... Um, the month and um, she's lovely because she's got a flower right underneath her too. A daisy chain to go with it you can still make. We've still got the daisy chain pack available and um, looking ahead for the next month um, you'll be you love these. Like they're all here and uh, what I love about them the most is, is uh, um, I know I shouldn't really but I love their little their little curly bottoms. Look at this. These are the three little pigs that are coming up for in the subscription box in May. So they're all ready to um, say hello or oink to you even. Different breeds um, to make. So Gloucester Old Spot, I keep forgetting what they're called, but oh, yeah, no, they're all the right way around. I saw that some one the other way around. So they're, they're really, really easy to make. You can make all three of them and um, it's using pipe cleaner techniques. And then just to give you the heads up, we are doing a pig style next week. That is next week's live stream is to give the pigs a home. And, um, and it's all using our structural core. And then the pigs can go in there. One can fit inside there. And one can be here. And um, I'm just going to do this overhead because then you can um, you can maybe see where all these things fit into um, into the equation. So you've got your piggies all ready to eat their vegetables out of the truck. They probably knock it over and put it in the dirt. And um, they're all happy little three little piggies, happy in a pigsty that you can make for them next week um, at one o'clock on YouTube. Same place, same time. Right, pigs are going, pigsty is going. The the uh, details of what you need for the pigsty are on our um, on our um, YouTube channel. Just find the advance notice for this particular one, and I think it's yeah. There you go. So um, pigsty next week Tuesday um, as the final um, make along in April. Right, let's get back to our landscape picture. So I want to show you how to add more details into it. Um, so adding a little owl into here, for example. Um, again, you don't need to have a lot of details going on. You could just have um, the wool that you need to make an owl, which could sort of be a, an off-white. I'm using the fox sheep here. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of um, a little bit of um, the hair brown. And uh, I'm going to keep the features really, really simple. So I'm, I'm mixing these wools together by just teasing them apart. So I'm making a mottled effect here, which is a little bit like the little owls that um, we, we have as a kit that you can actually make. So there you go, you've got, got that. And I'm going to put that into the tree. I want it to be a little bit whiter. So just make that a little bit whiter. And you don't need to pre-shape it or anything. You can just put it in the tree. I'm actually sort of tucking it away into the um, foliage of the tree a little bit already. Though you could just put um, some foliage on um, in front of it. And I'm just shaping this into a round or an oval shape, I should say. Just an oval shape before I felt it flat. Tucking that 
the sides in. Um, as with the sheep, there's not much detail, and I'm also trying to keep the um, the actual owl, owl shape so sort of slightly um, 3D on the picture itself. So that's um, just something that I'm doing. So there's my little owl sitting in the in the tree here, and all I need to do now is need to give it a little face. So the face is actually browner than I, I wanted it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit whiter. Um, I wanted the body to be brown and the face white, but it's worked out the other way with my mix. So I'm just going to make the face a little bit white. And um, I don't know if I've shown you this before, but if you've got wispy fibers that you want to get rid of, you just have to twizzle them around your needle like you're winding spaghetti onto your fork and then sort of tuck them in so that they don't spill out of your shape, which you're trying to keep very distinct. There, tuck that in a bit. So I'm making almost sort of like a, a bottom heavy figure eight here by just tuck, by just felting into the sides to, to give that head more of a shape. And then it's, it's working with tiny, tiny amounts of wool, but you do need a little bit of uh, brown. And I think that the, um, if you've got a short fibered brown like the Portuguese Merino, that would be ideal, which I have got a little tiny bit left here because you, you don't want great big fibers. The short the uh, Portuguese Merino is super, super um, short in fiber. And all I need to do now is twizzle a tiny, tiny amount so I can give it sleepy eyes, which um, I'm felting down. This is sort of quite fiddly work which is just as well we don't give we don't add a lot of details into the pictures i i think i need to do that again that sort of just disappeared into the head so maybe do this a bit bigger and then i can felt it down a little bit more so you just need to have your your patience um do this when you've got a bit of patience and when you when your eyes are bright and um, and you, you're not about to go to sleep and you've got good light as well. Um, now I put the other eye in. So I'm doing this sort of at a V shape. I'm assuming the owl is asleep. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. But you can have an owl with wide open eyes. It might be easier. And then all I need to do is I need to give it a beak. Now that the eyes are in, I can see a, bit, a little bit better where my... Um, where the dimensions are. The eyes are a bit wonky. I don't know if you can tell. Let's see. There you go. Little owl poking out of the tree. And a, a tiny little beak. I'm going to use the same color wool. Um, and because you're working on such small dimensions, don't worry too much about um, making a perfect beak. Just get, get it in there one way or another. And um, that's it, really. There you go. So I've got a little owl sitting in the tree here. Um, it's hidden away on a branch. And it's got, obviously, some of the green is sort of covering it up. You can brush that over a little bit as well. So that has just added a little owl. Now, what about flowers? Let's have some flowers. So you can have flowers um, in the background, which could just be um, we, let's let's put um, some poppies into the into the back there. Now, when you put poppies in the distance, all you see is 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 just a sea of red. So as soon as you put a little bit of red into into your picture like that, it looks like you your your eye your brain will see poppies poppies in a field just here in the background on one patch of that um, field where which is far away because you've got the sheep in there and um, the sheep are tiny so that that is already that's a field of poppies done within a minute now what about when you make a poppy say you want to be it further in in the front you now what you've got to um, scale it by is that tree that's sitting here here so you've got your tree and you know that the tree is um is, is 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 your scale you've also got an owl in the tree so the owl is very likely to be maybe about the same size as a, as a poppy is tall depending what poppies you're making there's lots of different types of poppies you can make orange or red poppies or whatever but um the, the main thing that, the main point i'm trying to make is don't make a ginormous poppy that is half the size of the tree because that's not what a poppy will, would look like in relation to your tree 
So um, a poppy is made by just putting a little splosh of red down. I'll just show you how one is made and then um, the poppies work best if they come in in larger numbers. Now I really like to use um, the natural natural dyed um, orange which I know I've got here somewhere. I just need this is why my wool gets into a mess because I just make everything messy. If I can't find that natural dyed orange I might just have to oh I think that's it. It's very close to the flamingo but not quite. It's a little bit more muted the color. So let's have that. <clears throat> So I'm just adding a tiny bit. It's almost like it's uh, poppies can be so sort of quite shiny. So they've got the shininess of them. That is 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 that sort of lighter color there, the reflection of the light almost. And then um, of course what you need is a bit of black. And again I'm not planning this too much, but just put it somewhere in the middle, and instantly instantly you recognize this as a poppy, right? So. There you go, there's the poppy, which is just the flower head uh, dangling there at the moment. So we need a little bit of dark green um, to give it a stalk. And just felting that down like a thin stalk. And the and the, the effectiveness is if you have lots of them. So what I, what I would su suggest is if you have lots of them, then um, make sure you put the stalk down first. So have a, a load of these stalks in your in your um, field or um, on your landscape here, and um, spread them out. They can criss crisscross over. One can poke up more. One can be lower down. With one, you might just see the flower head um, because the stalk is out of out of the picture. So there's no reason why they can't cross over. That's exactly what poppies do. They sort of sway in the wind, don't they? So just put a few flower heads down and then decide how many you want to make. Put one here. Um, I quite like it when the wool spills out over the side of the picture because to me it just looks, it's not finite. It goes on. Some people prefer if it's very neat around the edges, you can just cut the edges neat later if you want to but um, you can also just keep it a bit a bit um, more free and wild. Um, what I often do is I cut the corners at the end because that makes it less square. But again, that's completely personal taste. Where have I put my green now? There, tiny bit of that green left. You, so you can see that you really, really do not need a lot of um, a lot of wool and then um, I sort of have a I, I normally have a production line of poppies in that I just put the um, the flower heads on first so just put a few poppies on here a few few heads some are smaller some are bigger some are um, slightly different shaped some overlap which is absolutely fine, just like in real life. They don't have to be standing there like soldiers. They're not, that's not what poppies do. So get your poppy red down. A bit more red. I've got actually that that is a that red's not even red that I'm using here. That is our um red orange. So <laughs> these are these are the diff a different color to that one there. You've probably spotted that. I've only just spotted it doesn't really matter because that is a is actually a really good poppy red that red orange it doesn't have to be that really dark red poppies come in all kinds of colors they, they also come in in blue no not in blue um in purple i don't think there's many blue not well there are blue flowers but i don't think poppies come in blue unless i'm mistaken if if anybody knows if poppies come in blue then do put me right um so i'm just putting that um natural orange in there it is a it is a very it is a color that I, you find often in nature i really like it um and then all you need to do is put a bit of black in the middle so you could get away with dark brown if you don't have black that's fine and it uh, and the black thing doesn't have to be right in the middle it can also be sort of slightly off the center it all depends which position the poppy is taking so whether it's um, looking straight at you or the, the head is drooping slightly or it's facing the other way that that um, 
sort of all depends on that. Felt your black down. Oh, I've got to really got to lift this picture up. I have a feeling it's very fastened on. There we go. So I've made I've made a um a few poppies here by the wayside. Um yeah, look, that's how how uh, intense that has been worked that part. But the felt is absolutely super strong. It does not affect um the felt and and the the quality of it. It stays um totally firm. If um, you want to add um, some other flowers, I really like sort of a um, um, a collection of little of little um, primroses. I know that poppies and primroses aren't out at the same time, but we're just sort of going to pretend now. And you can just add little um, little patches of little flowers here into the picture. Do um, do them close together. I'm putting the flower heads down first. Just a few here and maybe one more. And I know they sort of all melt into each other. But the nice thing is what, what you do next is you put a little bit of um, golden orange, not golden orange, golden yellow into the center. There, I've got that here. And then, of course, you have to do something. Um, so there, I'll just put that in there for now. And um, it's they literally, they do look like little primroses once you've done that like a little collection of primroses and then we have to um, put some greenery around it so that they have little stems or um, uh, leaves. That's what I'm, the word I'm thinking of, little leaves, just there. Right, so um, you, you could use just some um, pea green. It's probably quite a nice color to put around them. There you go. There uh, is the little little primrose patch just there, and you can repeat that with um, um, with other colors like purple. They often come in purple, and there you can add lots and lots of details, lots and lots of um, different flowers, daffodils. If you want to make a daffodil, um, use your um, golden orange. Again, if you're making a few, do the do the stems first. But I'm going to start out with a flower head. Um, put your daffodil here, maybe. Again, it is it is not. Um, um, you don't need to have a lot of um, planning on on shaping or anything like this. And then add a tiny little bit of. You can either put a lighter yellow with it, or you can put some um, some orange into it, and. Again, add a little, little um, stem, flower stem with it. And these are flowers often, they, they pop out in, in numbers. So if you do another one here, and this time um, I'm going to put this, um, our bright orange here into it. This is this is what I'm I've been trying to say to you is that our brain recognizes these flowers because it recognizes them by color, so um, that is how you can sort of trick your brain and you don't have to do a lot of work um, because it just sort of happens automatically. With tulips, you could put a, a just round, semi round or oval shapes down. In fact, I'm going to put a bit of orange into that one here as well because it does make a difference for our um, our brains to recognize it so there's just a couple of daffodils there um, and what's important is that you've got the background all primed which means that um, the color in between so it whatever is behind the flowers looks further away and that that is um, that is so important when you do a picture where you need to create that 3dness and you can of course um, add sort of where the where the stems go into the ground you can add a little bit of like we did with a fence just put something in front of the fence so it doesn't look like you've just put the fence literally in front of um, in front of the like on top of the picture but that it's integrated um, so I think that um, is just something else that I can show you. I'm just going to check in with everybody. I forgot to show you that the um, May fairy box is um, the Emerald Fairy. Now what's special about her, she's the first one that has got um, really, really long legs. I mean, they're really long. 
So they are straight in her legs. Look how long her legs are. I really love it. So she's quite an elegant, um, tall fairy. And she has um, the little um, loopy locks for her hair. So that's really, really lovely, these these um, delicate dark curls and she's holding I wish it was a real emerald I wish I could all give you a real emerald um but I just show you just as a little preview she's holding an emerald in her hand there and um yeah she's rather lovely long legs so this is uh, to look forward to in 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 May and I'm just gonna have a little check in what's happening here on our chat let's have a look mm. Um, Carol says I make it look so easy. It is easy. Trust me. Just just be free. Just put your put the wool down. Then then look through your camera, and see what uh, the picture looks like. I I have the advantage that I can actually see in the camera while I'm doing it. So I can. It's almost like I, I can check already that it's um it's in proportion. It's exactly right, and um. I maybe should show you that you can put things in the sky as well. That might be one of the other things that we're doing. But I'll just... Um... Oh, Jane has got her fairy, fairy decoration box. So if you don't know this, but we have a limited number of fairy decorations that uh, we've put in a box. And there's over 150 individual items there that you can buy just for £10. Super easy, super, super quick. And then because it fits in a large letter um, box, we um, you save on postage as well. So you get that... Um, um, through your letterbox um, so what else is going on oh um, um, oh awkward prawn is Welsh so she's doing daffodils instead which I also did so have we got anything else that's hiding in the in the landscape because I think we can give um, we I think we can give um, uh, Alicia, the heads up to um, choose a winner. And I just see that uh, Pam Duffy has popped her head in as well. So hello, Pam. I'm going to say a special hello to you. I hope that you're still watching. And I'm very, very sorry I haven't been able to watch your Sunday um, shows, which, of course, everybody knows that Pam does amazing uh, needle felting um, Sunday afternoon shows at 4 p.m. Uh, look her up on YouTube. And she often um, has a stab at our subscription boxes as well, but does other things as well. Lots to learn from her. Everybody's got their own way and own things to do, and not there's no right and no wrong way. But um, so you might you might find some things that you prefer um, to other things, and um, and yes. Yeah, so thank you very much, Pam, for supporting us and um, for for popping in today. It's really lovely to know that you're there. And. Um, we have got a winner and it's Marion H. So Marion, um, if you could um, send us an uh, an email, and of course this is today, Tuesday, the 20th of April. The winner is Marion H. On Thursday, it will be somebody else, which will be announced by Hannah, who um, is there to support the repeat of the live stream. So Marion, send us, Marion and whoever is going to be on Thursday, send us an email, info at themakers.co.uk and you have won yourself. And baby barn owl kit. So you can make four uh, lovely barn owls. They're, they're actually pretty much life size on, on, on this picture here um, from what you're making. And um, so that is Marion. Um, and whoever wins it on Thursday, do send us a message on our email um, info at themakers.co.uk. Remember, we're spelled with two S's. So it's literally this here info at themakers.co.uk. And then we will get your details and we post this out to you. Right, let's just... Um, um, oh, yes, Serena, um, uh, Pam is still there. She's saying, Serena, Joe, everyone, hello. Lovely, warm welcome. Oh, it's so nice to have you here, um, Pam. Um, and uh, what else? Has anybody mentioned any other animals that are in um, hiding in there? Any, not that we need to know anymore, but um, I, I'm just nosy. Uh, anyway, let's let's put something in the sky that's sort of something that I haven't done yet. Remember, if you want to put any other features in there and you're really worried about doing them freehand, just find a, an image that you can trace um, around with your water-soluble paper. That could be a hot hot air balloon if you if you um, if you're not sure. So, um, and I'll show you how to add um, a bird into the sky. 
and it's it's the simplest thing ever. So you you know how how as children you've been drawing birds in into the sky that are sort of like a, a V. That's basically what you can do with needle felted birds in the sky as well. This is quite a this must be a raven. It's a black it's a big black bird. Um, but you can just literally needle felt these in the sky like that. Um, you can use different colors. So if you want to make a smaller bird, maybe down here, um, do that. You can change the color in the sky. If you feel you need to have more of a, um, um, a mood in the sky, then you can do that too. So that's, that's something you can add at any time. I think I, I love, actually, I really do like ravens where we live. There are ravens and they're always the, they always have to be the birds that fly higher than any other bird. I noticed that they always sit in a higher tree to anybody else. So you can do that. Um, you can add, I mean, you can, this with landscape needle felting, you can, you, you have to literally force yourself to stop because um, you might never stop otherwise. I will just show you one other thing is, and that is that we have got a, um, a wool, the fairy mix, which I know people won last um, time together with a dragon mix. And it is, it is perfect for making tiny little flowers um, or if you want to sort of put flowers in a shrub. And I'll show you that. And after that, I will t t um, show you also our new um, shelves that we have got. So that's what I will do to finish off. But if you want to add some, uh, make a little shrub and, and add the flowers into it. So say, for example, on the side, use these curls, the Lester, the green Lester curls to make... Um, to have sort of more distinct branches, if you like, with foliage on it. Yeah. And then you can, these this fairy mix, I've got sort of quite a pink version here, but it comes in all kinds of colors. Sometimes it's got bright yellow in, mixed into it, bright orange, um, bright blue. Just take a tiny little, it's almost like it could be a little rose bush that you're making here, and just felt lots of tiny little um, flowers on there by teasing off. Um, little blobs put them in and um, what I like about it is that it's so finely mixed that the variegation of the flower will come through even when it's felted down so it's such a, a delicate mix that if you add lots and lots of little flowers into it it looks um, like they're all slightly different colored so that it's not a very it's not flat it's not a flat color so I don't know if you can see this coming through here maybe I stay away from the purple color here and go more for the pink um, there is definitely a blue a blue um, streak running through this and so the with this um, the the effect is in the numbers just put lots of them down and um, carry it on and that's also what we we've been using in our um, blossom and blue tit um, wreath. They've, it's even got sort of little white streaks running through it, which is also um, quite interesting. So just keep adding this into it. And then um, that, that makes a really delicate, um, small... Can you see how this is adding um, a new dimension into your picture altogether? So that's something else that I just wanted to share with you. And um, we're coming to the end of this final part of the needle felted landscape picture. I, I look at this and I think, oh, I want to add so much more into it. But like I say, you can over egg it. Sometimes less is more. I would probably put a couple more sheep in the field um, and, and maybe one more here. Um, and um, I don't know. I, I almost don't want to make more. I think what I've what I've inadvertently and accidentally have done is, and that's something I haven't talked about, is that it looks like the sun's coming from that side because you've got the lighter hillside here. You've got the the sunlit um, um, side of the um, hill here, and then of course I kept that side of the tree. Um, lighter so it looks like the sun's coming from here so that is something that you could take into consideration when you add colors which you can always adjust I mean I could even make this lighter now if I wanted to highlight more of the sun um, shining onto that side of the hill so you can um, make all of these uh, changes afterwards still once you start looking at it and I think um, I'm 
I think this landscape for me is finished, even though you could add more flowers and more things into it. If you're making an autumnal um, landscape, then you could add toadstools into it. Um, you could have more trees there. You can have bare trees. They don't have to have um, full foliage. Um, there's so There are so many, 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 many ways how you could make your landscape. Of course, you could do a seascape as well, which I've forgotten again to show you, but um, maybe it will turn into a kit. And just to show it to you from... Um, this view, what I normally do is I cut the corners round, just literally cut these off. I'm not cut, cutting the um, the wool um, off the edge because I like it um, when it spills out. And I would even, if you hang this up, I would have it um, not behind glass. I would have it in a frame um, and it looks really nice if you have it in a frame and, oh, not that way around, and, and have the wool sort of spilling out. I really like that. Um, that it 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 looks like it's not just a finite picture it actually does continue so I hope you enjoyed this and I will just show you these shelf units because we love them so we've often wondered how can you display your um, makes in the best way and we have actually got two sizes and they are like honeycomb shape where did I put the other one now it's um it's well it's too long since I put it somewhere. Oh, it's here, it's hiding. I've got it. So you um oh there was something on it. So you could have what I like about it is that you could build a whole honeycomb um on um with so you can extend. Um actually you would do it this way, wouldn't you? So you'd I can actually have the um the shelves at a at a horizontal um space obviously you would say use the same size They're, they come in two sizes these are the sizes just to give you an idea and this is uh, the badger from our um small kit fits onto the sh onto this one and also fits onto here so um they're they're that's sort of about the size that you can see they're five centimeters deep so this bit here is five centimeters and um you could have all kinds of things happening here you could have a bug in the mug um, poking his head around um, he could be there you can have um, the the little piggies when you've done them instead of putting them in a pigsty they could be on the shelf there like that you can have um, what else have I got that I can put on there uh, what else so you can put the truck on there as well down maybe down here so um, you can you can use these to display your um, needle felted creations. You could have fairies sitting on there, and you can have the uh, butterfly that we made recently on there as well. And um, for some reason, I've just run out of ideas what you can put on there. But you could have a butterfly pinned onto here. So there's um, all kinds of things. These can be painted. They're just natural um, wood. And um, they can be painted in any color that you like. And I think it would look amazing to build them into a whole honeycomb shape against a nice wall. So they they look best if they're against the wall. Then you've got, you, you have a clear, um, like a solid background rather than see-through where you can see me behind. And I think that's how your animals would come out um, at an amazing um, on the top, you could put a larger animal um, because it doesn't isn't confined to fit into these um, shapes here. And um, I'm going to put this away now because I don't need to. I don't want to be behind shelves when I say goodbye. But that's basically all. We've fitted lots in today. Well done to all your landscape making. Please do share the rest of your um, landscape with us when you've finished it. If it ever, if it's ever finished, do share it with us. And I'm hoping that um, you've enjoyed these three weeks of making the landscape together. And I can't wait until next week. Something completely different. We're making a pigsty, of course, as you do. So until then, I say goodbye and um, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.